my dishwasher. Please excuse that. And by the time you see this video, I'll have been 30 for like a day now. And uh, for those of you who have watched my the first part of my top 30 favorite video game characters and enjoyed it, just to let you know, I will be working on the, the next two parts, and I will get them up as soon as I get them done, okay? So yeah, so, if not, it's like, I wasn't, there's no way I'd be able to get 30 entries done in a single month. It's like, you know, there's scripting, recording, gathering footage, and editing. Yeah, there's no way I'd be able to get that done in just a month. So, but rest assured, there's plenty more goodness to come. Also, speaking of goodness, if you've seen my Shovel Knight Let's Play, thank you for watching that, and I really appreciate it. For those of you who haven't, I would recommend, I would, it'd be awesome if you could watch it, because I had a lot of fun doing it, to be honest. And uh, I want to put together a highlight reel of your favorite moments from the Let's Play, so if you, if you have seen it and you have some favorite moments you'd like me to feature in the highlight reel, post them in the comments of this video, and uh, Once I have a total number of moments, I'll put you up in the highlight reel and post it as soon as I am able to. So, uh, anyways, I recently heard that uh, there were two new characters who were going to be added to the, at least the arcade version of Blaze Blue Corner Phantasma in the coming months, uh, those being uh, Selk A Mercury and uh, Lambda Eleven. I already know plenty about Lambda, but uh, since I only recently got Chrono Phantasma, I'm going to have to play through the story to get a better feel for uh, Selica. But apparently, Selica has a partner robot, kind of like Carl and Relius, and apparently a skilled in healing magic. So I'm, I wonder how that's really going to translate to her playstyle. Does kind of look interesting, though. Man, I'm really grasping for stuff to talk about right now, am I? <laughs> so, okay, user questions then. Reminder, if you have a user question, go to my channel, click the About tab, click the Send Message button, and that's how you do it. First question comes from Jack Stevenson, who asks, What is the best game you've played so far in 2014? Shovel Knight, hands down. I mean, that is one of, I think that is like, one of, if not the first Kickstarter games I ever backed, and I don't regret any of it. I mean, seriously. That game is a two, is an old-school gamer's dream come true. I mean, the people at Shovel Knight really knew what they were doing here. I mean, that's it. Awesome old-school gameplay, kick-ass chiptunes, amazing sprite work, a story that came across without long, drawn-out cutscenes, and some amazingly satisfying boss battles. In fact, I've got enough ideas in my head for videos regarding Shovel Knight that I could make an entire month about it. Not sure if I will or not, but uh, I gotta admit, the month of Shovel Knight does have a nice ring to it. Next question comes from Diego Brando. What's your favorite Shin Megami Tensei game? To be honest, I really can't answer that question really conclusively, mainly because I've only really played uh, one Shin Megami Tensei game, and it's a spin-off, that being Shin Megami Tensei Persona 4. And considering, that, and by the looks of things, that the Persona Fran series is pretty much becoming its own thing now, separate from Shin Megami Tensei, yeah, it's hard. I, I haven't really played a straight-up Shin Megami Tensei game. I hear they are really good, but really difficult, though. So, if you have a favorite Shin Megami Tensei game, that isn't Persona 4 anyway, feel free to recommend it to me. Okay, next question. Isaac KLCO asks, You said that Mega Man X7 was the worst Mega Man game ever. What do you think of Mega Man X6? Oh boy. Where do I start this? I'm going to be honest with you, I do not hate X7. However, 
I do find it to be flawed. On the one hand, X and Zero controlled really well. Some of the bosses were really fun to fight. But uh, level design was mixed at best. The nightmare mechanic was rather dodgy, and uh, Sigma really came out of nowhere in this one. Also, the dialogue was cheesy as hell. I mean, Zero says, I hid myself while I repaired myself. I mean, seriously? Come on! This is a perfect example of what happens when you rush a game for an early release. Especially one that wasn't originally supposed to exist. Yeah, I've studied up on this, and I'm sure may, many X fans will, un will remember this, but uh, Originally, Keiji Inafune intended the X-Series to end after X-5 with Zero Sacrifice. Sadly, some of the higher-ups at Capcom saw dollar signs in their eyes and decided to make another game without his permission. Now, my problem isn't that the game exists, it's just that it's just... It's just flawed. It's not horrible, in my opinion, it's just flawed. Next question comes from the Dark Ace, who asks, On a scale of 1 to 10, how cool was the A New Dawn cinematic for League of Legends? Uh, okay, that cinematic was definitely a dan out of dan. I mean, really. They... The people at Riot put a lot of effort into that cinematic, and it shows. I'm guessing it was made to uh, celebrate the revamp of Summoner's Rift. And boy, did it look awesome. It's like, some great animation for the characters. A great depiction of a, of a, of a heated battle without any dialogue whatsoever. The effects were great, the CG was awesome. It's just a really great cinematic. Kudos to you, Riot. You really know how to promote your game. Last question comes from Andrew Collins, who asks, Have you played any Tales of games? Have you seen some of my, have you seen some of my countdowns? 